Hello. Um, sorry, my laptop was doing very strange things. Um, right, so so this is today's 5 p.m. announcement. It's the 15th of December, unless I'm very much mistaken. Wasn't it about this time last year Boris cancelled Christmas? Or was it this time last year he said he wasn't going to cancel Christmas and then waited until two days before or something? I'm sure the time is very similar anyway. Um, say goodbye to that, I reckon. I don't know. I don't think many people are going to comply. This this is the problem. You see, I don't know when politicians started deciding what holidays we had. Um, this this all started with Blair. Blair is the catalyst for all this. He's really whatever went on before that, and I, obviously. Maggie Thatcher helped cover up Hillsborough and close down the mines and all this sort of thing. But whatever went on before that, it was Blair that started all this overlord stuff. We are superior, you know. Um, there was a time, believe it or not, when politicians used to write back to the constituents when they got a letter from them. I do remember these days. Um, Blair started all this. There's something called, if you don't know, there's something called Prime, Min Prime Minister's Privilege. Uh, which, rather like a judge overruling a jury, allows the Prime Minister to, to force a motion through, as it were, because if he or she thinks that they should go through, well, it's a great amount of responsibility, because obviously it can go very badly wrong, which in Blair's case it did, mostly. Um, so this is Prime Minister's privilege, I think, uh, between Blair getting in, between 1945 and Blair getting in, I think, it, which it may well have been when it was invented. Um, it was used three times. Well, 40 years or something, 50 years. Blair used it seven times in 10 years. Uh, I forget the acts of war, whatever you want to call them, don't, don't ask me that. Um, it's far too long ago in the mist. But yeah, seven times in 10 years. And this is a thing, it all started with this multiculturalism. You know, because it was all projected as something that was good for the economy and we must have this and, you know, we must have people into different races mixing and all this sort of thing. But, of course, it was forced down our throat because Blair was the one that started the mass immigration. And at the same time, he pushed through the Extended Human Rights Act and guess who's a human rights lawyer? Yes, his wife, Sherry. And that was so they could make a fortune and get into the housing market because Sherry Blair took all the taxpayers' money work. It was all on the taxpayers' tab, all the, all the, the jobs she took. Um, so that was so they could make a fortune and get into the housing market, and hence he's worth about oh, fifteen million pounds or something like that. Um, that's where he got all his money from. And the multiculturalism and the human rights—that wasn't the only things he did. You know, he was the one that accelerated the program on on global warming and what they're now calling net zero. Because he was, I can't remember the figures, but he was the one that put in higher targets than what he was told to say at the meeting. And we're not talking two or three times, I think it was ten times the amounts or something ridiculous. Um, I mean, as a visionary, you could say he was a genius. As far as sanity goes, completely deluded. Utterly insane. Um, because the targets he was he was quoting were never going to be met in the time he was saying. Um, and now, of course, you know, uh, we're, we're going to have no petrol or diesel cars by, was it 2030 or something, I think? Um, well, it's, it's a 10-year plan. Ministers love 10-year plans because they're very rarely around to see the end of them. So when it all goes wrong, they can't be blamed because they're not there. And in most cases, with, with half of these anonymous fools, people are probably going around saying, yeah, who brought that in? I, I can't remember. What was his name? Oh, I don't know. Um, and just as an example, and I saw it today, I stopped at Thurrock Services to have a shower and a bit of a break, um, and they've put some new charging points in, these electric charging points for the cars, and there's five. And there's about 200 cars in there. So can you imagine... No petrol or diesel. It's all very well, Boris, saying that you know every new house built is going to have an electric charging point. But people have to stop on the road. These these batteries don't last very long. 
So can you imagine the queues of 200 cars and the services trying to get to use five to, 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 It's never going to happen. But by that time, Boris will be long gone into the ether himself and, you know, written a couple of books. Idiots will buy them. That'll make him more money. And, and instead of Tony Blair and, and John Major, he'll be the one popping up on the Sunday morning telling, well, Boris Johnson says this. Who cares? Boris Johnson is so full of cow manure that, he, you know, he would rival the, his output of, of manure. He would rival a manure factory. The same with Blair, the same with Major. And really, all they've ever done in their time of office is take, take, take. They're only in it for themselves. Blair with the human rights, Major with... Oh, I did find out, I, I think I've mentioned before, a load of money went missing when the council housing was sold off in Huntington. So that was Major's time, so he probably made a bit of money there. Boris with all this, and his mate Hancock with all these 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 um, projects, these, these... Oh, what do you call it? I can't remember. You know what I mean. When Matt Hancock gave it, gave it to his mate with the pub and all this sort of thing. This, all they're in for it is, is making money. Right? And in the meantime, in the meanwhile, they'll just make everyone's life as much as a misery as possible. Um, like the guy in Blair's Day who was arrested for revving his engine at traffic lights because a Muslim happened to be crossing the road. That was racist. But it's all this financial uh, revenue-raising court thing that Blair brought in with the privatised police and all this sort of thing. That was already in full swing. Um, and again, if you look on a site called Company Checker, you'll see that every single police station, Google, Cambridgeshire Police, Essex Police, Oxfordshire Police, whatever it is, where you are, but you'll see that every single police station has a company number. And what they do is they move them around. They leave, the, they, they leave that for a year, and then they close it down, and they put it on another one, you see? Start another one. And it's the oldest trick in the book, because then the revenue never catches up with you. So it's all designed so that the police, a limited company, never has to pay tax. <laughs> Nor do they pay tax because they charge now when they, they marshal these football matches and stuff. And it's actually written into the legislation that they don't have to pay tax on that. By their mates in Whitehall. So if anyone thinks the police are like a separate entity, forget it. They're all in it together, right? Which is why we see them going around arresting people, arresting people for not wearing a face mask or having a party, when Boris is having loads of parties in secret. And not only that, they know exactly when it's going to be released to the press that it happened. And they also know the police are never going to investigate. Well, no, of course they don't, because they've had a word with Cressida, Cressida, because if Cressida starts to investigate them or assign someone to investigate them, she'd lose her job, because that's not doing as she's told. So we come back to this thing. Oh, yeah, Boris apparently is going to decide whether we have Christmas or not. Well, Boris, I don't really care. All right? You don't have to open the door to the police. You don't have to speak to the police. You don't have to answer your mail. In fact, you don't even have to have a letterbox. There's no law that says you either have to have a letterbox or that you have to open your mail. And if you do get your mail and open your mail and just throw it in the bin and not respond to it, there's no saying that you've ever received it, is there? Because the courts won't, even the courts don't send stuff out recorded delivery now. So the police of the councils are unlikely to. So, no, Boris, I'll be having my Christmas, as I suspect many other people, because we're all sick to the back teeth of you bambling on about coronavirus, Omicron. Right, I've actually just seen on Facebook today on one of the newspapers, I forget which one it was, the symptoms of Omicron. <laughs> sore head, runny nose, sore throat. So it sounds like a cold, but it's more likely COVID. Oh, no, it's a cold. Same as we've had colds for centuries, ever since mankind was probably invented. You're just calling it, you're calling it COVID like uh, you called the flu COVID or like the symptoms, I can't forget which one it was, the Kent variant or something, which the symptoms were exactly similar to hay fever. Um, 
with this MERS and the symptoms are practically identical to pneumonia um, and you know you've just basically called every sort of common ailment that we get COVID <laughs> which presumably is why you think you now have the right to dictate when we have holidays because you can just change the English language to suit yourself <laughs> Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. How did we end up with six, 650 narcissistic psychopaths in the House of Commons? I don't know. Crazy, crazy times, kids.